All right, welcome back everyone. Uh, would like first of all to introduce myself. My name is uh, Johan Erberg. I head up the partner in marketing management at Telesnera Global MTM Services and partially responsible for us being here today, but only partially. Uh, I hope you had a great morning. I certainly did. Uh, I hope the afternoon sessions was uh, intriguing and also informative. Uh, a lot of the things that we've been talking about today is actually today and what's going to happen with IoT and the Internet of Things in the next coming years. A lot of good things, a lot of things is happening. Big, big difference from four years ago when we were here. Uh, but what would also be very, very cool, very, very interesting is to see then what. So uh, th to round up this day, uh, we're going to move 10 years into the future and to do that is a company that works with weak trends the small signals that we probably don't see and they then translate this into what potentially the world could look like from technology in the long-term future so with that i would like to welcome up sebastian from trend one to show us iot 2025 Everybody, my name is Sebastian, and I want to take you on a journey, a journey into the year 2025. But there is a little problem. I don't have enough energy to, to do such a journey, so I need the collective intelligence or the collective energy in the whole audience. So I want you all to close your eyes. Close your eyes and start a dream how the future will look like in the year 2025. How will your customers look like? How will the internet look like? Just close your eyes and start your dream. Wow, we did it. We are in the year 2025. It's the 19th of November. Sorry, some bad news in the beginning. Also in the future, we have to get up very early in the morning. It's 7 a.m. But the future is changing everything because in the morning, we will be woken up by our contact lens. Good morning, Mr. Kane. We can save our dream in the future if we want. You see everything is a little bit blurry, but it 
take some time. Here's the date as well. And we have all the information we need direct in our field of view. Everything is augmented. We have a digital cloud around us. Everything we can configure it. And that's cool. We have object recognition. Everything will take in our hand. It's recognized. Or for the ladies, we have the calorie counter always in our field of view. And everything is clickable and transactive and not only at home, also on the street. We have this digital clown around us the whole time, as you can see. And now on the street, my favorite application, face recognition. I see what the people are twittering or even what they want from me. <laughs> and also, the whole advertising will be connected to the internet, will be personalized. I just get the information that I really, really want. Now I ask the smart guys in the first row, what do you think? Is this more science or more fiction? More science, that's the right answer, because at the University of Washington, We already have this contact lens, we just have 10 pixels, but maybe in 10 years we will have a much better resolution. And the biggest problem at the moment is the wireless energy connections to the contact lens. And here we have the antenna and in the middle we have the LED and in the future it will look like this. When we go to a bar, every face will be recognized. You directly see the Facebook account, the Twitter channel, the YouTube channel, and can talk to the people directly. Okay, now you think this guy from Germany on stage, he's crazy, the future will never look like this, but let's look 10 years back, what was 10 years in the past we had cell phones like this. Do you remember who do you remember this phone? Yeah, a lot of people and this was the best phone that we had at this moment. We have I think 0 0.3 megapixel. Now we have 24 megapixel. So the future is not so far away as we can see and it's changing the whole time every day twice as many smartphones are sold as babies are born. Do you have kids? How many kids do you have? Two. And how many digital devices do you have? Yeah. <laughs> Some? Okay. I have zero kids and four digital devices, I think. But the change uh, is not the interesting thing. The interesting is how we use this mobile devices, the smartphones, and what do you think? How many calls uh, with smartphones we had in 2014? Run about. <coughs> 19? 19? That's nearly right. We have 17% using uh, our smartphones, WhatsApp, uh, Google Maps, selfies, and so on. We use more than the uh, original call. But what will happen in 10 years when we use our cars, our bikes, etc.? Um, only 20% for, uh, ex uh, for example, for driving. What will happen when every device is self-monitoring, analyzing, and reporting itself? How will the future will look like? This is an example from Austria. Um, they installed sensors in the ventilation shaft and so they can uh, recognize the carbon dioxide um, in, the, in the station and measuring how many people are in the station. Or we have devices like this. This is a screw from the university 
of Darmstadt, a small screw which is already connected to the internet and measures the force acting in machines. So in the year 2025 there will be 100 billion connections and these connections will generate a huge amount of data and the most, um, the, the most important thing is to use this big amount of data so we go further on from big data up to smart data and use this data we have for uh, solutions like this. This is a software as a service model from the USA. Maybe we can turn up the volume a little bit. And this software can be used by all transportation departments and it also rewards you when you take another train to avoid traffic jams. It's not just about the benefits for any one person. We're trying to fundamentally change how whole cities move. We want to make it easier, faster, and less stressful for everyone. And when you use our app, that's exactly what you're doing. We're urban engines. But not only uh, departments will use this technology, also cars will be connected in the future, as you can see here on the left side. In the US, the US um, department says that next year every car will be connected with each other car and can interact with traffic signs and so on. I think most of you know, know all these examples like traffic jam, connected cars and so on, but have you ever heard about a swarm, the new swarm, which is measure the water quality in real time? It's from Singapore and it sends data via Wi-Fi to centralized data storage. Uh, the idea basically tools. is that you have uh, these robots go out in the water and they can take uh, measurements of different kinds of water, uh, physical as well as biological parameters. So we have probes installed on the bottom uh, here that can make those measurements and the swarm can then relay these measurements in real time back to the cloud where the data can be aggregated. Yeah, but not only plastic swarms, also real animals will be part of the Internet of Things in the future. For example, here we have a duck uh, which is uh, measuring the vital dates all the time. So you can uh, predict epidemics like the bird flu, etc. Or we have goats and sheep, they are connected to the internet and measuring um, the motion of the animals, like in Italy, the Mount Etna, the goats and the sheep walk down the hill two hours roundabout before a volcanic eruption. But when we talk about the internet of things, we also have to talk about smart home, and I think every one of you knows this intelligent fridge uh, which is connected to the internet and sending out data all the time in the future it will look like this we don't have this yeah we will have this fridge but also the items in the fridge will be intelligent like this milk jug from general electric Jack is fitted with high tech. Hey, I'm Gaz from Quirky. And I'm Jess from Quirky. And we're here to talk about Milk Labs. Quirky came together with GE to make an existing consumer product smarter using integrated software. And together we have reinvented the milk container. So this isn't your average milk jug. This milk jug will tell you when your milk goes bad, how much milk you have left, and there's an integrated app for your iPhone that will let you know all the facts about your milk. The optimum pH level for your milk is 6.7, and when your milk starts to spoil, the pH drops. 
So we have a sensor in the base that will let you know if your milk is beginning to spoil. When your milk does go bad, you get a text message called milk status that lets you know that your milk is spoiling or you need to go out and buy new milk. And the cool thing is you also can reorder milk when the milk is empty or when the milk is running bad. Also, washing machines uh, are connected to the internet in the future, like uh, this prototype from Berg. It's connected to an iPhone application. And it allows you to start your washing machine while you're on the way home. Berg is making cloud services for people working with connected products. To understand how best to make this platform and structure it, we prototype uh, products, hardware and interfaces for ourselves. One of the prototypes we're working on is for connected washing machines. Manufactured products uh, live in this world of plastic, metal, uh, unreliable radio, uh, small embedded electronic systems, uh, which is quite different from uh, the abstract, rather distant domain of software architectures that we find on the web. Berg makes a system which bridges those two worlds. And it also reminds us when the washing powder is running low. But also, um, shopping will be more and more convenience in the future. Convenience is a big trend. Who knows uh, the Amazon Dash button? Yeah, a lot of people. Here we have one. What is the Dash button? You just attach it to every home appliance. Don't let running out ruin your rhythm. Introducing the Amazon Dash button for Prime members. A simple way to reorder the important things you always run low on so you'll never run out. Set it up to order what you want, then press it when you're running low. Get an order alert on your phone so it's easy to cancel if you change your mind. And with Prime shipping, you'll get new products delivered to your door before you run out and never miss a beat. So in the future we will have this one button mentality like also on the uh, new packaging from Gillette Fusion where you can directly on the packaging order new blades for the new Fusion. But there's a big problem how we can interact with all these devices in the future in our smart home therefore we have a lot of new uh, gadgets working with voice control like the Amazon uh, Echo which is connected to the Wi-Fi and can give you all the information. It's also connected to the Amazon store so in the future you can shop is it for me? with your voice. It's for everyone. It's called Amazon Echo. How's it going? Uh, I'm just finishing up right now. Is it on? Oh, it's always on. Can it hear me right now? Uh, nope. It only hears you when you use the wake word we chose. Alexa. Well, what does it do? Alexa, what do you do? I can play music, answer questions, get the news and weather, create to-do lists and much more. Awesome. Huh. Alexa, play rock music. Rock music. Alexa, stop. Wait, I want to try. Alexa, what time is it? Yeah, we have Alexa here. Let's try it out. Alexa, how is the weather in Hamburg, Germany? Currently, in Hamburg, Germany, it's 8 degrees with showers. Tonight, you can look for clouds and showers and a low of 5 degrees. Yeah, in Hamburg, there are always showers. Um, Alexa, tell me a joke. Do you know where I had my first dance? At the Amazon.prom. <laughs> Alexa, how to boil an egg? To boil an egg, put a pinhole in the round end to avoid cracking and cover in boiling water. Boil for three minutes for soft Alexa, stop. Or up to seven minutes for hard boiled. Alexa, stop. So, we, as we can see, we'll interact via our 
voice control or even with our motions like the ammo spark, you already can get this. <coughs> it recognizes your mood with a little camera system. And you get different news, messages. Wow, what's the latest score? Depending on your Celtics 90 to 80. Would you like me to let you know the score at the end of the fourth quarter? Yeah, that'd be great. And we have a face recognition here. Let's try it. Here I am. I'm male, 26, not really, but I'm happy. Cal, I also can, can you be set a time for three minutes, please? Setting surprised. the timer for three minutes, Michelle. Thanks. Sad is not so easy, but it's not only working with Thank me, it also works with a lot of people it? here. Yeah, sure. Oh, he's angry. <laughs> Let's try it over here. Twenty-four, it's right on. <laughs> and you also can use it in your company, in your office, to track how the mood is of your employees, whether you are there or not. So, we go on. When we talk about the Internet of Things, we have to talk about wearables. Why? Because wearables are the most visible forms of the Internet of Things at least from the consumer perspective, but wearables will be a big topic in the next years. And the wish to be mobile, to have all the information direct in your field of view, already exists in the 90s, as you can see here. And the problem today is that the most people think that virtual reality glasses like the Google Glass, etc., work like this. Log into Facebook. What? Why? But no one has Google Plus. Ah. Play music. No, 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 no. Nearest park. Um, okay. Uh, this doesn't seem like a park. Oh, shit. Is it raining? It's broken again. <laughs> yeah, okay. But there are many uh, interesting and cool applications already existing for virtual reality glasses, like from Revolve, where you can control Here, your home. I'm actually going to give you guys a view via the Google Glass. So first, let's you come over here. Control the light. The I heating. can turn the lights on. And that's using our Insteon switch. We can come over here, and we've got some hue lights. Let's uh, tap and turn those on. And I can even come over here and turn on our Yale lock. Let's slide there. Now we need some music, so let's come on in here and let's turn on some music on our Sonos. So that was really neat. And in the future, we'll combine this technology with other technologies like from Metayo, uh, which worked with your body heat. There is a little thermo camera uh, on your glass. Metayo is uh, bought from Apple this year. And it makes every object, physical object around you, a touchable object. To a part so of the IoT. The world becomes a touchscreen. In your hands, you can interact with the digital content in any environment. So, in the future, everything will become digital. But when we talk about variables, we also have to talk about new variables like uh, the headphones from uh, Bragi, a German company. These headphones are like every other variable, they can measure your heart rate, your pace, and your energy. And you also can make phone calls, listen to music. And the 
Buggy will be released next month. And the next step, they will fit in a SIM card so you don't need your smartphone anymore. And you don't have smartphones maybe in the future, you just have little hearables like the buggy dash and you can get every information you need like your emails and so on. So as you can see every device will be connected in the future like jewelry, uh, like accessoires here we have a ring maybe you know uh, the ring it's a smart device with a gyro sensor where you can control your smart home. You also can write text messages when you're in the car, for example, just by using your finger. Or we have clothes which are connected to the internet like the Google Yes, Yes, No, the cooperation with Adidas. This is super boring. That's more like it. There are also we have a newest I product. love the feeling of wind in my laces. And the shoe. Here we go. To. Are you a statue? Let's do this already. Call 911 because you're on fire. But not only the clothes, also the equipment like the basketball will be connected in the future. This is the new Wilson X. It's already on the market and it's connected to your smartphone and when you use some headphones, you learn how to play basketball in real time. Great shot! Using the Wilson X is easy. All you need is the ball, the app, 10 foot standard hoop, and a net. It works on any goal, anywhere, anytime. Once you've downloaded the app, all you have to do to connect the ball to your phone is to spin the ball aggressively high in the air. So in the connected basketball app, we've created two game modules and two training modules. The more you train, the more you gain, the more achievements and unlocks you earn. There's a lot of innovation in this basketball. It's game time with Wilson Eck. And another business, uh, the print industry also will be connected to the internet. We have uh, electronic print, we have SIM cards uh, in, in magazines. And this is an example from Brazil where you can like or dislike in real time different styles direct in the magazine, so the magazine is connected to the internet. Also packaging, like uh, from Frolic24, it's not a sensor which is tracking uh, the heat and everything, it's like a mobile phone that is in the package and involves you when your mom, your girlfriend, etc. is open the package. So the sensor reacts on light. Yeah. Okay, this is the gift calling. It works. This is awesome. 
me to enter. I'm rude. You're, hey, are you calling from the box? <laughs> actually, actually, you called me. You called us. Now basically, we wanted to be with you while you opened the gate. So we sent this box, and now you called us automatically. Wow. Or maybe you know uh, this Barbie from Mattel or the Cockney toy from IBM with a, uh, is an artificial intelligent toy which can talk to you, answer questions, and give you feedback. I love New York. Don't you? Yes. Tell me, what's your favorite part about the city? She answers in complete sentence. Fashion or sight, what's your favorite thing? Also, remember the conversation. Food and restaurants. I love the food. Where else can you find so many types? What's your favorite food? Your turn. What's your favorite food? Lobster. 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 I've never eaten that before. <laughs> You'll have to take me to try it. Well, it's expensive, but we will take you to try it. No problem. Well, we are on stage, so we can show all these lovely people how amazing we are. Being on stage is exciting, isn't it? Yes, I love it. So, in the That's future, cool. the kids will I didn't know that about you. talk I like to the Barbie. Or we will interact uh, at the storefront of a shopping building like here in the UK from Rehab Studio. It's connected via um, beacons and interact with the person in front of the store. The person is recognized and the storefront use all the data from his smartphone and also the data like weather information and so on. So when it's raining, maybe you get a rain jacket. Or when you go to a basketball game, you get some sportswear. can directly shop at the storefront. And last but not least, at work we also will be connected uh, with the Internet of Things. This is a tracker, maybe in the future you have this badges around your neck. A 33 ounce Hitachi business microscope and looks Tilia like Zubera a typical employee ID. But embedded in each badge are infrared sensors, an accelerometer, a microphone sensor, conference. and a wireless communication device capable of tracking everything. For instance, how many times you leave your desk and where you go. The badge also senses who you talk to by reading other employee badges and for how long. The badge is even capable of recording the distance between employees talking face to face. By detecting subtle movements such as talking, nodding, and silence, The badge is also able to tell an employee's boss how actively the person intervened in a meeting. So, in the future we will have quantified employees. Uh, another thing is that the Internet of Thing is um, paving the way for the future of robots, so we have to take a look what will happen in the robotic. There we have intelligent robots like this one from Germany, there's a similar one in the US. This robot uh, automatically learns how to cook via YouTube videos. The chef. More of an automated kitchen side, really. In the Comprises future, two robotic arms above a large just cooking surface. Have to say what you want to eat. A sink and an oven hidden behind a glass safety screen. So the robot Rather will use from a recipe, the intelligence the system relies of on the, the Internet of, of Things with a 3D camera, then and cook near every stir. by itself. The robot turns on the hob with a deft finger before picking up some butter taken from a group of pre-assembled ingredients. It melts the butter, adds shallots and seasoning, and over the next 20 minutes or so, it produces an impressive bisque. The be or we have little consultants like here from an a insurance company. A person. From What IBM. Is there anything I can help you with? Uh, well, I'm not sure. I've never talked to a robot before. What can you help me with? No need to be shy. I can ask you understand questions. personal bank products as well as general banking questions. Ask away. You know, Great, so I'm interested in a mortgage. Is that something you can help me with? Bank. Sure, I can answer general questions about the mortgages we provide and point you in the right direction. Great, so what are the different kinds of mortgages? There are three main types of mortgages. 
fixed rate, adjustable rates, and interest-only mortgages. Okay, and what does adjustable rate mean? An adjustable rate mortgage features an initial fixed interest rate period for a number of years. Okay, and what should I consider if I take out the interest-only option? So, we also have a little robot here, Darwin. Darwin, say hello to the audience. He's very sporty. Darwin, Darwin maybe you can do some push-ups. What are you doing? Be careful, David. Yeah, as you can see, in the future, everything will be connected uh, to the internet. My favorite case is a case from Frankfurt. Um, I went there with a colleague to a bar, and it's placed in the Japan Tower in Frankfurt. And we Germans, we drink a lot of beer, and when we drink a lot of beer, we have to go to the toilet, and I went to the toilet. And what happened, you see here, You all know this little screens in front of his vase. But here was an interactive car racing game, <laughs> which I controlled with my pee. It was an advertising from a taxi company. If you're too pissed to drive, take a cab. And as a trend researcher, I was very nervous and go out and took my um, colleague and the cool thing is this game was multiplayer enabled so we can play together but the problem was I'm um, running out of you yeah that was the little journey to the future I hope you enjoyed it and as a friend researcher I have to say all the best for your future have a nice evening if you want to try anything talk to Alexa play with the robot or try the Google Glass just come in front and try out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, everything is not technology. I'll give you something in real time. Ah, thank thanks. you for coming. Thank you. And thank you everyone for coming. Uh, I think it's been a tremendous day. Uh, one of my favorites is the Amazon Dash. I have to say that will save my life. I'm going to look at that one later on. Uh, so what I would like to do now is round up the day. We prepared drinks and food, so I hope you have the time to stay home, uh, mingle, look at our partners. Uh, but before we leave, I also want to like to thank a, a few people, and especially you guys that came out here and spent a whole day with us. Our partners, which is a vital part of our uh, future success with Telius Nera, uh, and also our team, of course, and especially two people, which is Anna and Silla. They're here somewhere. Anna there, for, for actually arranging this. So uh, without the two of them, we wouldn't be here. Uh, once again, thank you very much for joining us. There's food, there's drinks. I hope you stay around for a bit. Any questions, Sebastian will be here. All our partners are happy to talk to you. Thank you very much for coming.